Hey everyone, welcome to another In The Zone video. I am here with the one and only Cheeseburger. And if you're not familiar with him, well, this interview will help to get you in the zone with everything that Cheeseburger has done so far. He is a professional wrestler and most fans know him predominantly for his work in Ring of Honor. So I'm very honored, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> I see what you did there. Right. I'm very honored to talk with you today, Cheeseburger. And I mean, as a wrestling fan and working in the business, I've heard about you for many years now. So this is great that I can actually sit down and introduce you to our viewership. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. So first things first, because there may be some people watching who don't know your origin story. Where did you grow up and how did you get into wrestling in the first place? Uh, so I grew up in Trenton, New Jersey. Like that's still where I'm built from. Uh, I don't, I haven't lived there for a number of years, but uh, born and raised in Trenton, New Jersey, and then kind of like moved around different parts of Jersey and then uh, lived in PA for a few years. Now I'm back in Jersey. Um, and I would always go to my dad's house uh, after like my mom and dad split. I would go stay at my dad sometimes. And then he would always, he was a big fan of wrestling. And he was the one that got me into it. So uh, I start I started watching wrestling about like, like the early 2000s, like 2000, 2001, like right around when SmackDown first started. Uh, and me and my dad would just watch and like, we'd love, we loved watching wrestling. So that would be like, that was my first introduction to it. Mm. And who was your favorite wrestler or wrestlers growing up watching? Uh, I, I liked all the big names. Like, uh, you know, I like The Rock and Austin. Uh, I would say Chris Jericho was one of my most favorite, but also most hated at the, at the time, especially when he was like undisputed champion. Uh, so I liked Jericho a lot. And then as I got older and like started discovering like Japanese wrestling and everything, Jushin Liger became my favorite wrestler. Absolutely. And so you grow up being a wrestling fan and then actually training as a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about how that process actually started, where you trained and, you know, just your trajectory to being a trainee to where you are right now. Uh, so I was 17 at the time and I kind of hit that crossroads in my junior year of high school where you kind of have to start figuring out what you want to do after your senior year where you have to figure out like you want to go into the workforce or if you want to go to college like you know kind of figure start figuring out like long-term plans you know which is kind of weird that you have to decide long-term plans at like 17 you know when you have the whole rest of your life ahead of you but that's how that's how things are so uh I you know I took a break from wrestling like watching it and then like that year I, I really started getting back heavy into it and I really fell back in love with it and I just discovered that the Ring of Honor school was about like, like 10, 15 minutes from like where I lived at the time. So I was like, oh, like this is, you know, I like kind of like looked myself in the mirror and I was thinking like, all right, is this something like I want to try? I like be in wrestling. Like I love it so much. Like maybe there's a way I can be in. So like I thought because I was like so small uh, at the time, I was like, all right, maybe I can get into wrestling as a, as a manager, maybe some kind of like non-physical role. So uh, during my, but the summer between my junior and senior year, uh, I was 17. I went down to the ROH school in J that July, like right after my 17th birthday. Uh, I met with the trainers. I met with Delirious and Daisy Hayes. I talked to them. I told them uh, I wanted to be a manager and I wanted to start training. They're like, okay, you know, our next class is in October. So if you want to sign up, join, uh, join our October class. And I stayed and watched training. I was like, all right, this is the place I want to be. So that October, uh, October 25th, 2010 was the date. Yep, October 25th, 2010. Uh, I started training at the Ring of Honor Dojo under the, under Delirious and Daisy Hayes at 17, and then that was uh, my first foray into wrestling, you know. Yeah, and were you nervous your first match? Like, what were you thinking during that moment? I was, like, crazy nervous. Like, I couldn't even, like, eat the entire day. Like, uh, I think I, like, threw up the beforehand or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, my first match in like Delaware in like 2012 so I did like about a year and a half of training before I was uh ready for my first match um and that was like May 4th 2012 I think uh and you know it was like a quick like two three minute uh, like squash match so it was like nothing now um, but I was like you know just you, that you get those like butterflies like feeling it but like once you go through the curtain you're like all right I'm ready like the switch is on and you're like ready to go but yeah I was like crazy nervous like for my for our first match yeah. And as for the training, I mean, you spent about a year and a half doing that. How grueling is that process? Talk to mm -hmm. us about what you felt with the training and just how hard it is training with Ring of Honor. Oh, it was, it was absolutely, it was, uh, I would do athletics a little bit, like as I was growing up, like I did, um, some, a little bit of karate and like 
basketball and I would just like, you know, do stuff outside with my friends. But that was, you know, that first day of training was by far the most like taxing physical thing I had ever had to do. And that was like, we didn't even get in the ring for like a few weeks, you know, like, uh, like at the, at the ring of honor school. And I, my school was like the same way. Like we, we work with people on the outside beforehand, like, and that's how they were. Um, you had to spend like the first few weeks just doing conditioning on the outside one to kind of like, you know, kind of earn your way into the ring in, in a sense. And also kind of like really like kind of like build your body up. Cause you know, uh, a lot of places they just kind of throw you into the ring first day, like you're say taking bumps or running ropes or like working with someone else. But like, if you don't understand the fundamentals of body control or like being able to support your own body weight or someone else's body weight, or just like flexibility and just footwork and different things like that, like, or just having general like strength, uh, you know, someone can, you, you or someone can get hurt. So I really, at first, at first I hated it because it was just a lot of like squats, like push ups, like crunches and just different like neck bridges, and, like tripods and headstands and everything. Uh, but like at, as I got older, I, I got I understood like why they did like that, because, you know, it's a very big risk just throwing someone in the ring like their first day. Um, and it, like my very first day of the training, it was like so brutal, like I almost passed out. I was so exhausted. And then like I remember getting in the car, my mom picked me up and wanting to quit like so bad and she like you know pushed me to give it another day and I came back another day and then another day became another day and then it just kept going on like that. Wow so your career is quite illustrious I mean just from your beginning to where you happen to be now particularly in Ring of Honor I would love to know what your favorite match has been thus far and you've had a ton of them is there one that sticks out in your memory? Uh favorite matches for me um it's tough to it's tough to pick one. It's very tough to pick one. Uh, if I had to pick like three, like off the top of my head, I would say uh, my my most re- my most recent favorite would be um, I wrestled Nick Gage in a uh, street fight match um, in Texas for this new promotion called like U4IA, uh, and that was like incredible, incredibly fun. Like I Nick Gage is one of my favorite wrestlers right now, and um, that was like a dream match of mine getting to do that, and uh, it was like. I'm I'm really glad I I filmed it and put it on my YouTube channel for people to see. So like because the show like wasn't filmed at all, so I would have been incredibly sad if that match is like just lost to the ages. So I'm like very glad I filmed it. Uh, so me versus Nick Gage in a, in a hardcore match was was awesome because I very rarely get to do hardcore matches and I enjoyed that like a lot. Like we had like doors and like chairs and like thumbtacks and everything. Uh, that one uh, was it last year? Yeah, last year in 2019 um, in Japan in Cork and Hall. Uh, day two of the ROH on a rising tour last 2000, February, 2019. It was me and Delirious versus Colt Cabana and Tor- Toriano and um, Corka Hall. And that match was incredibly fun. Like it was uh, a very good wrestling match, but it was very entertaining and very uh, comedy heavy. So like the, and we got the crowd like behind us and the crowd were like laughing. Like when you try and do comedy and the crowd actually laughs along with you, like that, you know, means you accomplish the goal. So I, I love that match so much. And then uh, another one I would say would probably be, um, I think it was the last time I think about Liger. Me and Liger versus uh, Will Farrar and Rhett Titus in uh, Ring of Honor for uh, TV. Uh, I think that was like about uh, last year, like two years ago. Yeah, me and, me and Liger versus Rhett Titus and Will Farrar. So that was my like top three. Nice, nice, very nice. And let's definitely touch upon Tokyo because the Japanese culture, especially the wrestling culture is just so famous. So many people love New Japan Pro Wrestling. So what was your experience like wrestling in Japan, especially for NJPW? What's one of the memories that you will hold near and dear to your heart? Um, it's just so many, like with Japan, like uh, Japan is my favorite place to wrestle, like by far, like um, not just because New Japan is such a huge company and they have such a big stage and getting wrestling in Tokyo Dome and Cork and Hall, all these legendary venues was cool, but just, yeah, just in general, like, the culture over there and, like, the fans are the best. Like, the fans there are so, like, polite and, like, respectful. And, like, they uh, – when they get behind you, they, like, really get behind you. Like, uh, they, like, bring you, like, gifts and stuff to shows. Like, they, they always bring their favorite wrestlers, like, different, like, like snacks and, like, candies. Or they'll do, like, artwork or just different gifts. Like, that's always really cool. They're, like, want to pick you up to eat and everything. Um, they're just, like, the culture over there, everyone's so polite. Like, you, you know – Tokyo is like the cleanest city I've ever been in. Everyone, all the shopkeepers are super polite, super happy to like 
work even if you like don't speak Japanese they they like try and give you like English menus and trying to speak English with you like just the culture and like the vibe and so like high tech and everything over there is just so much fun like I it's I would I would love to wrestle there just like all the time if I could uh so like after COVID and everything it's all the thing of the past hopefully um but if I had to pick like one memory I would just say like uh probably the very first time I wrestled in the dome because uh I remember wrestling in the dome and then um, my trainer Delirious is also there. He didn't uh, wrestle on that tour, but he was there just like as an ambassador for Ring of Honor. Uh, and I just remember like coming to the back and giving me like a big hug and like saying he's like proud of me and everything. And that, that meant like a, a lot to me that, you know, I can make my trainer like proud of me with something, something like that, that I accomplished. And what's it like training with Delirious? Uh, it's, it's, it's uh, absolutely incredible like he's uh one of the best most underrated minds in wrestling in terms of just like um as a as a trainer like understanding like having like having such a vast array of styles that he can teach but also just understanding psychology and like emotion and like drama and how to implement that and in, into every aspect of wrestling like he, he by far like you know i'm i'm super lucky to be able to have started under him at the ROH dojo, like him and uh, Daisy Hayes as well, uh, before she uh, retired from wrestling, like they were just the best trainers, like one could possibly ask for in terms of just like being great people and being, and creating a positive atmosphere in the school. And like, uh, but also like in terms of just like breaking things down in a way that's digestible and understandable. Cause a lot of people have very good knowledge about wrestling and a lot of people have very different views about wrestling, but, the hardest part as a trainer is being able to break it down and explain it to someone that has no idea like what you're talking about and make it digestible for them to where they can understand and like process it. And I thought they did a, a extremely good job of that with myself and other students. Wow. And now you're paying it forward yourself with your own dojo, which yes. is fantastic. So congratulations on that. That's a huge mm -hmm. accomplishment. Talk to us about opening Worldwide Wrestling Dojo. What led to this decision and what was that like, especially in this climate that we have right now? So in May of 2018, uh, so I trained in this, the building that I'm filming this in. Uh, this is the original building the Ring of Honor Dojo was located in. Like it had been here since about like 2007, I believe, 2006, 2007. So and I started here in 2010. So by the time 2018 hit, I had been training in this like very building for about like eight years at that point. Um, and Ring of Honor was making a, a lot of big changes in the company during that year. And one of the changes they're making is they wanted to move the dojo to Baltimore and start the start a new Ring of Honor dojo in Baltimore. Kind of like um, they wanted to kind of consolidate uh, a lot of things together, which I get as a business. They wanted to have a building where they could have like the school and like editing software and like the merchandise and like production all in like the same place to save on cost, which I get. And the school was kind of like one of those things that kind of like was always here in PA. We're not Bristol PA right now. Um, so that was like the last like kind of thing they decided to move down to Baltimore. So um, it became a point to where it was like, all right, do I want to move down to Baltimore and keep being a trainer at the ROH school? Cause at that point I was an assistant trainer at the Ring of Honor Dojo or, and I was like, or do I, want to try and open my own school here so my students that you know live in this area would still have a place to train you know I didn't want to I felt very guilty about leaving like possibly leaving them like high and dry like went nowhere to train and just abruptly shutting down school hey we're moving so um to, you know so 2018 I was like all right I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a try like uh, I got the money together to uh you know buy the ring and some of the equipment from Ring of Honor and then I signed over a lease and then June I believe June of 2018 was when we opened um so we've been open about two years now um same spot Bristol PA uh and it's been it was a little rough going at first especially like you know always starting a new business is like it's very rough early on but now especially this year like things have been picking up really really well and we're starting to really get recognized as one of the premier schools, not just in like the Northeast, but in all of, uh, all of the U.S. Yeah, and the logistics, the business logistics of opening up your own dojo, if you don't mind expanding on that a bit, what are some of the things as a businessman that you have to pay attention to when you're opening up your own dojo? 
Um, the first, the first thing was I had to take over the lease and then like, you know, make sure I had like, uh, you know, the initial like rent money covered and everything. Um, and then it was main, the, the second hardest part was getting the insurance for the, for the facility. And then also, and then after that, just getting like the lighting, uh, lighting taken care of and um, the already electric bill and everything. So it was like the main caveats the, the insurance, especially was a big, uh, big hang up. I had like no idea like what to do like for like insurance at all so i had to ask uh, uh danny cage at the mouse factory recommended me like a, a great place and i contacted them and they were like the the guy from there was very helpful and they helped us get insurance and everything so that was like the biggest hang up uh but and now like just over the last few years um i've been working on just like upgrading like the dojo like here and there you know whenever we have like the extra money in terms of like like the first thing I want to change, so I want to get buckles with like the logo and like some flags on them, uh, and then uh, different getting more weight equipment. Like we already have like a great gym, but just getting different um, things like an agility ladder or some kettlebells or like uh, like more jump ropes and everything, just different physical stuff like that. And then our most recent addition, which I'm very proud of, and I wanted to have for for a while, was uh, we now have an official like promo room in the back where. We have like a green screen and we have like a lighting set up and like um like a ring night and a bunch of like you know umbrella lights and um it looks it looks sorry I almost cursed there it <laughs> looks very it looks very very nice uh, I'm very excited for the uh, promo one to come together. That is awesome, and I understand that you are working with Sumi Sukai, who is I mean she's legendary. I've seen her in action myself up close and personal. What is your business relationship like, and how is it working with her? Oh, it's it's been it's been fantastic having Sumi around. Like, um, right when like you know uh, we've been friends for years and years and years. And when I told her I was opening uh, the school up, like she she like volunteered. She's like, I want to help you, you know, make this great and like be a part of this. Like, I want to I want to help you. Um, so she jumped right on board, and she's been absolutely incredible to have because she provides such a different style. Like, um from what I teach, you know, with her training in Japan. And then she's also like a black belt in judo and purple belt in jujitsu. So like she's able to teach a lot more um, grappling, uh, a lot more shoot grappling type things. And just like her training in Japan, she has a lot more, uh, she has a lot, a different take on like different fundamentals and stuff that uh, may be new to a lot of people. Um, and just like her, her knowledge and stuff of wrestling is like, it's, it's good to have like, I like, I like that we're, both kind of like on different sides of like wrestling uh, not in terms of like disagreeing but like i have like a certain way i was trained she has a certain way of she was trained we both have like different styles so like students are able to get like two different i uh two different kind of like mindsets about about wrestling which i think is kind of key uh, which is key to developing like a young mind in terms of just having um having one way but then also kind of like seeing a different side of things like wrestling isn't and never has been just like one way no matter how much people want to tell you it is there, wrestling has never been one way there are so many different ways to do things and i think that's i think that's as people get more experience they start to really understand that but she's been she's been incredible to have uh we're also like one of the we're also one of the few schools in wrestling that have a female trainer which i think adds a lot to us as a school in terms of just she can understand like a lot of things that I can't be in a, a female in wrestling and, and training as well. Like she can understand a lot of things that I can't do or can't teach. Like she can show that to them. Mm. And I know you guys are operational now. How was it at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic? Did you guys have to shut down for a little bit or what happened in that respect? Yeah, we shut down for about um, from March until about, August we shut down so about like uh, about five six months we did um and that was just mainly in, until like things around the uh Pennsylvania Philadelphia area started to loosen up um so we and we didn't want to open up just and make things back to normal so what we did was like I start putting like a cap on like how many students could join training like I think we initially started at like like six or seven like was like the max uh, capacity just kind of like spread things out a little bit more and then like as things kind of got like a little better we started like increasing and increasing it and then um, we started doing temperature checks for everybody um to check for fever and then um now everyone has to train with masks on so just there's been a lot of like different outbreaks in wrestling so we just wanted to kind of my goal is to keep everyone safe and prevent like an outbreak at the school so you know the temperature checks and like keeping masks on just kind of like make sure everyone's like we're, we've been cleaning everything in the ring and the weight equipment with um disinfectant spraying the ring with disinfectant so we're just trying to take uh, as many precautions as we can to 
still start training, but also just be safe with everything. Just be safe and be be smart with everything. Yeah, I like that. That sounds really good. That sounds really, really mm-hmm. good. Hopefully other places are doing the same, but it sounds like I don't think I don't think so, but I hope you you will hope so. I, right. I hope so. I don't think so, but I feel I think a handful of schools are, but I think most of them don't. So that's not my that's <laughs> not, not my business. <laughs> March to August is a really long time. What was some of the advice that you told your students to do in the interim, especially you know, having not just with wrestling itself, but with promos and all of that? Um, I told them, you know, take this time to you know, if they're want to like practice like promos and send them to me, like feel free. Like a, a couple of my students were sending me like promos throughout the throughout the the break. Um, just in terms of just like if they even if they couldn't get to a gym, I told them just like try and stay in shape, just being doing stuff at home. Like you know, like try not to get too complacent. You know, because you never know when things can get started back up. So like you know, at the time, you know, and we all thought this was probably going to last like a month or two at the time. You know, um, so I was saying like you know, you never know when things can get started back up. So just trying to keep working out at home. Um, throughout the quarantine too, I was sending my students um, like a playlist of matches that uh, that could benefit them. I was like, all right, send me, I'll send you a playlist of matches to send me like a, like a mini review of them and just let me know what you think, whether you like them, whether you dislike them, what you, what you enjoy, what you didn't enjoy. Just kind of show them a couple of different styles of wrestling or different ways of doing things in matches. So uh, just things like that. I was trying to like keep their, keep their minds thinking. You know, we're talking about your students kind of doing what they have to do at home and your guys are operational back on the up and up. But as for you mm-hmm. and your sake, what are your plans? What are you up to, whether it's Ring of Honor or elsewhere? Uh, well, since it's since uh, my first match back was in August, uh, I've been doing indie since then. And uh, I, I haven't returned to Ring of Honor yet because we're doing like very limited staff with the with the tapings and that's a whole process in and of itself. Um, but that'll, I'll be returning to Ring of Honor very soon. Um, but in terms of just like indies, like uh, things have been picking up with the indie dates. Uh, I've been like almost like busier than before COVID in a way. <laughs> uh, but like I, my, my goal for this year has been to kind of reinvent myself, especially after having such a long break in terms of uh, I've got like new gear. I've like changed like, you know, changed the hairstyle. Like uh, I have like changed my look. Uh, I've been trying to change my wrestling style, like focusing more of like my technical wrestling ability instead of just kind of like being the old, like kind of like underdog cheeseburger, trying to focus more on my my technical ability and like kind of like joint manip- manipulation and everything like that. So I've just been kind of putting the pieces together, trying to figure out like ways to come back fresh. And so far people have been really enjoying like the, the reinvention. Like um, I've gotten like a lot of fans and a lot of the wrestlers in the back of all, you know, they've all been very supportive of it and really enjoyed it. So it seems like I'm going in the right direction. So it's just about fine tuning it right now. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm glad you mentioned reinvention because I purposely waited until towards the end of this to ask you this question. Where does the name Cheeseburger come from for your wrestling name? Oh, so that's that started as um, it started as like a joke when I started training. Uh, my friend Rhett Titus, uh, the very first time I met him, we were going on like a road trip for Ring of Honor, I think to like the Midwest or something like that. And yeah, I went to say hello to him. I you know, seen Rhett on Ring of Honor, but I never met him. I was like, hey, you know, uh, nice to meet you. And he just like looks at me. He's like, oh man, you need to eat like a cheeseburger because I was like so skinny at the time. Uh, that was, you know, that was like the first thing he thought of. So then um, everyone was just like start calling me that as we were like setting up the ring truck. And then uh, for the first road trip, like uh, every time we stopped at a rest stop, like I had to get like a cheeseburger to like eat it. And that was like their like weight gain in plan for me. Uh, so that was just how it started. And then it became kind of like just the name people knew me as in the locker room and then one day uh like january 2013 um i was doing a segment at charlie haas where i hadn't debuted yet for ring of honor i was just doing like indies under like a different gimmick um but the segment was going to be like he's being yelled at by the crowd i come in and like get the streamers like toilet paper out of the ring and he starts yelling at me and then he gets on the mic starts yelling at me and he just like calls me cheeseburger off the cuff and then the entire crowd like you know like six seven hundred people in the Dubern's arena start chanting cheeseburger and he like beat me up and when I got to when I got to the back, my boss comes. He's like, "Oh man, we're gonna have something this cheeseburger thing." And I was just like, "Oh man, that kind of sucks. Like, I don't want to be called cheeseburger." <laughs> now, do people expect you to eat a cheeseburger every time they see you? Like, especially, I'm wondering if there are any. No, they they don't. But I get a lot of questions from fans about recommendations for cheeseburger. What's my favorite cheeseburger? I guess that my name makes me an expert on it. But I you know I like burgers, so I give them I give them some recommendations. <laughs> What is your favorite cheeseburger? Or what cheeseburger spot would you recommend? Uh, there, I I love this place. Um, it's like a mini chain in Pittsburgh. It's called a uh, Burgatory. 
um they have all these like really fantastic like uh different options for burgers you know like you can get like an elk burger like a bison burger like a bunch of different crazy stuff like that um so definitely burger tour in pittsburgh if you're ever in that area oh we're gonna check that out i like it i like it so what's your advice for anyone who would be interested in training at your school and becoming a professional wrestler um well first and foremost uh if you are out there and you're interested in coming to the worldwide wrestling dojo like Feel free. We have a brand new website up, which I am absolutely in love with. It's uh, www.worldwidewrestlingdojo.com. So definitely check out that. We have a contact page and we have all the information there if you want to contact us and reach out about training. Um, with that being said, uh, if anyone's interested in training for professional wrestling, I as, whether it's like at my school or any school, I think the most important thing is to do your um, do your research on the school, like. Um, like with our website, we try and put as much information out there as possible to make it to make it easy for someone to decide um, if this is the school for them. You know, and I always encourage. Uh, actually, let me backtrack. We put out uh, a lot of information there because what we what I look for in like different school. I compared my my website for me. It's like different school websites I've seen, like kind of what information they offer and things like that. And so many wrestling school websites, it was very hard to find like just general information. Like some schools, it was even hard to like find out who like the trainers were. Um, whether it's like uh, trainers, like how much it costs, like what days they ran. Those are like, you know, very pertinent questions that someone kind of needs to know, like right off the bat. Um, so we just tried to put as much information out there and uh, make it as easy as possible for someone to decide. And then, you know, encourage them to contact us. And I always encourage like, not just in my school, but any school to go and like meet the trainers and schedule a meeting and actually like get to watch a class. Like um, I think, if uh if there's like a school that's that's like they're like kind of weird about letting someone come watch a class to me that feels like they had something to hide you know it's like a little weird um but i always encourage people to come like all right just come for an hour like two hours like sit and watch the class like see uh you know talk to some of the students see what they think about the classes and everything you know just come check us out and i always prefer meeting people face to face before they sign up just so that we can you know it's just so you can get it's better to get a feel for people and, and i think that helps make people more at ease when they come, especially people with like no experience at all. You know, it's going to be very nerve wracking the first day. So I think just getting to be in the facility and like see what goes on and how the culture is and how the environment is can go a long way. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. And my last question before we go is your dream match. What wrestler would you love who you haven't wrestled before you would love to step in the ring with and why? Uh, definitely, uh, before he retired, it was Liger because we never had a singles match against each other. We, uh, but now I would say, uh, Tanahashi would be my dream match. Uh, he's, you know, up there in age, but he's still one of the best in the world. And he's been one of the best in the world for the past, like, like over like 10, 15 years in New Japan. And he's basically the John Cena of wrestling over there. And it's, he's the, he's the guy, you know, he's the ace for a reason and he's one of the best ever. Uh, so yeah, definitely Tanahashi would be one of my dream matches before he uh, eventually retires. Love it. And I would really like to see that. So that's a great answer, Cheeseburger. Thank you so, so much. Before we officially end this call, I usually end all of my interviews with my interviewees, giving our viewers all of your social media and any other announcements that you may have. So the floor is now yours. If you're interested in a fantastic wrestling school, come check us out at the Worldwide Wrestling Dojo. I highly encourage it. Uh, check out our website, WorldwideWrestlingDojo.com. We post great clips of training on our social media. You can follow us at Worldwide Dojo on Instagram and Twitter and you know, Worldwide Dojo on Facebook as well. And as for my social media, you can follow me at CheeseburgerROH on Twitter or at ROHCheeseburger on Instagram. Uh, I post things about my life, things about training, uh, cool wrestling clips. So check me out. and. Uh, Buy my shirts on prosandtees.com slash cheeseburger. Awesome. Thank you once again, Cheeseburger. And thank you everyone for watching In The Zone. We have more amazing content for you, especially in the wrestling universe. So stay tuned and be safe. Take care.